My name's Harriet. I hack your AI, so the bad guys can't. Well, I can't really have a channel that talks about AI security without actually talking about cyber and information security. And it's really important to understand the key principles behind cyber and information security because as a more mature field, there is so much that we can learn from that field and apply and adapt into the field of AI security. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Harriet. I missed the boat in computer hacking, so now I hack AI instead. And I'm here to help you understand how you can secure your AI systems from attackers. So I've spent a long time working in cybersecurity, and I still find it fascinating how many people think that cyber and information security are the same thing, but they're absolutely not. They're both complementary and very important to understand, however. So cybersecurity is the practice of protecting computers, networks, and digital assets from unauthorized access, processes, damage, attacks, or theft. It's quite a mature field, and there are lots of best practice frameworks that you can look at. For example, MITRE attack is a really great repository of TTPs or tactics, techniques and procedures by various threat actors to conduct cyber attacks. Information security is more specifically about the protection of the information actually held in those systems. And when people talk about information security or infosec, as it's more often known, people often refer to the CIA triad. So you're trying to protect confidentiality, integrity and accessibility of information. One of my friends in cyber put it really well when he said that to him cybersecurity is about sort of protecting the shell but it's the information security element that actually informs the impact so if someone's able to get into your organization's systems the kind of impact they're able to make really depends on what kind of data they can get access to and how they can use it it's about the information itself and not necessarily the fact that they are able to perform some kind of cyber attack and get in well ransomware is a good example of this you use an attack vector to get into the system, which is typically a cyber attack vector. However, once you're there, you're holding a company's information for ransom, and that's what's so dangerous about it. So a similar way of thinking about that is that AI security is another complementary part of that equation, which is more about the AI aspect of a cyber and information and AI system that has unique vulnerabilities and exploits. Another reason that I think cyber and information security is a good example to look to is because the internet was also an emerging technology about 50 years ago. And people really grappled with how to actually adopt the internet in a safe way. And it was also something that was very convenient, saved a lot of time, saved a lot of money, you know, provided a lot of entertainment value, but was inherently insecure. And so from the lessons of securing the internet and our digital spaces, what can we learn from that about applying that to our artificial intelligence systems. And there is a lot. For example, in cybersecurity, the mindset of security from the start is really important. So initially, when people were adopting computer systems, they typically prioritized convenience over safety and security. And this meant that security practices as attacks began to emerge, which they naturally did, attacks like NIMDA, Code Red, the Morris worm, it meant that security principles were sort of bolted on as an afterthought. And that meant that they made the systems clunkier, they were inefficient, they're expensive, they were difficult. So around the 2000s, this idea of secure from the start as a design best practice really became commonplace in software engineering and computer security. And it's this idea that as you're actually coding the system up, the entire system should be designed to be secure right from the outset. So from when it's designed and you're deciding what it's going to do, what kinds of systems it's going to interact with, what authentication you have, um, which is basically who is able to access that system and when and for how long, what kind of information can be passed between systems, what kind of information can be put into a system. There are so many different kinds of cyber and information security based attacks that have led to a lot of learnings in the cyber and information security space. So I just want to focus in on the rich history of cyber attacks. I could spend an entire series dedicated to this topic because they are incredibly influential in how we address technology threats today. In 1988, the Morris worm, which is often considered the first computer security threat, was created by Cornell University student Robert Tappan Morris, just as a fun side project to, in his words, see if it could be done. And it infected thousands of computers and resulted in the first felony conviction in the United States under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. 
Fast forward to 2001, the NIM deworm and the code red caused widespread outages and financial losses and spurred the development of security by design practices, as I mentioned before. Now, in 2010, Stuxnet, a highly sophisticated malware, targeted Iran's nuclear facilities, causing physical damage to centrifuges and signalling a new era of cyber-physical attacks with a geopolitical component. We're used to discussing cybersecurity today, especially for those among us who are a bit younger, as though the field is very mature, and it is compared to AI security. However, we have to remember that only 30 to 40 years ago was the internet just starting to be available to the general public, and cybersecurity is still evolving, these days, to include other technologies like AI. In recent years, cybercrime and cyber attacks have undergone a significant evolution, increasingly orchestrated by sophisticated criminal syndicates and state-sponsored groups. These well-funded and organised entities operate on a global scale, leveraging advanced techniques and resources to carry out their activities. A notable example is Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT groups, such as Fancy Bear, believed to be associated with Russian intelligence. I have a few other names here on the screen. You can see how uh, creative and inventive these group names are. These APT groups specialize in conducting long-term targeted cyber espionage campaigns, infiltrating networks of government agencies, corporations, and critical infrastructure sectors. Their tactics are often involving sophisticated social engineering, zero-day exploits, and malware deployment, posing substantial threats to national security and economic stability. There is every indication that these groups are turning their attention to AI vulnerabilities, and therefore it is especially important that we are conscious of ensuring AI security does not follow the same trajectory of cybersecurity in thinking about security as an afterthought. While artificial intelligence introduces new vulnerabilities and exploits, things like designing models to be secure from the start, designing models to be safe and aligned from the start, thinking about integrating best practice design principles, even from a project management perspective in AI, how we actually control input validation into our AI systems, as well as output validation, and then how different AI systems work together to kind of fact check each other. Authentication of access to AI systems as well. There are so many lessons that can be applied across the fields. And this is there is some initial thought on how best to adapt cyber and information security practices into AI security And this is some of the work I do. I love it. I think it's really important. So while some of these questions have answers, and I encourage you to go to these resources to see some really good recommendations for a bit more specifically how we can apply these principles to AI security, there is still a lot of work to be done because it is such an emerging space. And if we had more researchers and practitioners working on this um, from all fields, then we would be able to mature the field a lot faster so that we can prevent AI security from superseding cybersecurity as being one of the world's greatest technical and geostrategic threats. So here is the Harriet hack for the episode. Cyber and information security principles will not directly protect AI systems themselves, but there are lots of methodologies, principles, practices that can be adapted into AI security. I'm interested to know if any of you work in cybersecurity. Honestly, most of the people that I speak to bridge the AI cyber world. I speak at a lot of cyber and hacker conferences because I worked as a data scientist in cybersecurity for a long time. So I'm, I'm very much used to just talking to security professionals. So I'm really interested to know in the comments, are you a cybersecurity person? What do you think about artificial intelligence? Have you thought about AI security before? Comment down below and let me know. If you want to help support me and my channel, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on an episode. And that's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode.